Okie dokie, pig and a pokey entities. Right, so we're going to do this thing now. Jam, are you ready? I'm, yeah, I'm, oh, yes. Yes, I am. Okay. Testing, say something. Something. Yeah. Okay, we're just waiting for my Mac to realize there's another display. Okay. Yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Doing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Can we see me? Not yet, but we can hear you. Okay. Hey, so... Uh, how many people are at their first ever Drupal or open source software event? Yeah, Dania will count fast quickly. <laughs> wow. Well, that's that's. Thank you for coming. Um, if if I were there in person, I would really uh, like to know what got you interested in. But welcome to the Drupal community, it is a, uh, it's an exciting place to be right now. And it's been an exciting place to be for the last um, more than 10 years, frankly. And um, I can tell you, you've made a wise choice. We're not a cult, but. <laughs> we can see you now, so. Hey, good morning. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming. And and it is it's an incredible time to be in Drupal. And we're on the cusp of this amazing release with Drupal 8. And to sum up a lot of what you were just hearing, Drupal 8 it has built been built over the last five years in a very forward-thinking way. And it's very future friendly. And it's going to allow us to um, enable a lot of good to be done in the world and, and, and affect a lot of change and help people realize their visions um, in a transparent and a secure in, uh, way. And this, this story of empowerment is what I call the fundamental design decision of Drupal, the, the ability to give less technical users incredible, uh, incredibly powerful tools um, through the user interface and, and Drupal 8's user interface. And, and it's the, the, the underlying, all that technical stuff doesn't matter to someone who can now click together uh, incredible multilingual um, restful web applications that can power native apps on phones, that can interact with the Internet of Things, that can, um, you know, run uh, native apps, websites. So it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic time and it's, um, it's never been a, a better time for designers. Uh, to be getting into Drupal, and it's never been a better time to be building sites for content editors for all those sorts of workflows. So welcome to the Drupal community. I really, really hope this is not your last Drupal event. I'm going to shut off my camera now and share a few slides with you uh, that I prepared. Um, <laughs> finishing them up, last night in Pisa Airport, where I spent uh, most of the evening, I... Um, I uh, I experienced an emergency landing yesterday trying to get home. That was kind of fun. So, uh, yeah, we had fumes in the cabin, and um, it was pretty neat. Uh, the pilot said, hmm, there's been a problem that I'm going to tell you about later. Now the plane is landing in 15 minutes. And we went, Nyeh! and then went out over the ocean. And guy got very nervous <laughs> because we were going straight down over the water, and then all of a sudden turned around, and we were on the ground. Um, and also very exciting, it's the first time I've landed on a, a commercial runway with fire trucks following the plane. <laughs> yeah, so that was my day yesterday. Let's go over to my slides now. Um, yeah, airport Wi-Fi was terrible, but uh, uh, it, uh, I think it worked out okay. So I've been giving uh, some different versions of some, some different talks around, around some of these ideas. Um, and essentially, uh, the much, much longer story that I can tell is that I see uh, open source software, Drupal, uh, uh, perhaps especially in a, in a tradition of idealism and idealistic communities, communities driven by ideals to effect real world change. And we're in, a, we're in an amazing position now um, 
as 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 Drupalists to to affect real world change with technology. And it's it's um, I'd like you to keep in mind today and going forward that um, you know we are the empowered practitioners who are building the web and who are building the next generation of of digital interconnected technology, and we can build our products and projects in ways that empower us all. Um, and we are privileged. We're the gatekeepers and controllers of technology now. Um, and we should always strive to build safe and secure applications by default. We shouldn't make things ugly and hard to use and RTFM stuff because um, who cares about the dumb people? And our project Drupal is very good at empowering less technical users, okay? Even more importantly, digital rights are human rights in this day and age. And we have an opportunity and a responsibility to enable others less technical than ourselves to enjoy freedom, privacy, and security. So the title of the talk, I Idealism as Code, um, what's a quick example of that? Well, the United States Constitution uh, and the Bill of Rights, which are the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, were written in the late 18th century, and they included a passage uh, in the First Amendment, uh, which is the first piece of the Bill of Rights, which said, uh, among other things, that citizens have a right to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Now, in 1791 uh, and in 1850 and in, even in 1950, to petition the government was an awful lot of work. Even with, uh, uh, by the 1950s, with a national uh, transport network and, and airplanes in use, um, collecting signatures was incredibly laborious. You had to be everywhere in the country. You had to ship to literally tons and tons and tons of paper to the government if you wanted to make an effective petition. Nowadays, expressing an incredibly idealistic statement, like the people have the right to re uh, redress of their grievances with the government, um, well, the White House has. Uh, a number of GitHub repositories and is participating in open source. And there's this We the People application, which is built in Drupal, and it allows people to petition the United States government to change something. So there have been some great petitions so far. Um, at this point, <laughs> at the point, at the point when this petition was filed, um, the government promised to respond to every petition when there were 25,000 signatures. Uh, on it, um, the White House's official answer uh, to this particular petition began with, this is not the response you're looking for. <laughs> um, one bit of real world change that this, uh, this particular petition affected is that uh, now petitions require 100,000 signatures before the government will respond. But uh, this is a, a, a perfect example of, of an, idealis an idealistic statement uh, uh, about society that we can now actually make happen thanks to, thanks to Drupal, thanks to, thanks to code. So um, I'm going to skip over this in the interest of time. My hope is that there are some of you there who have come because you've heard about Drupal 8 and all of these exciting external technologies that we're importing, um, but those are conversations for another day. As I said, I'm here because I want you when you're building applications, uh, I want you to be successful at free Libra open source software. And you must please build safe and secure applications that maintain our privacy and our freedom. And they need to be compelling. And when I say that, we're living in the iPhone age. We're living in a world where beautiful, fantastic digital experiences are available to all of us very, very cheaply. And we have to build those too. So let's keep that in mind. And they should empower people to do good, to do well, to realize their own visions. That's what we're here for. This is me. Uh, I call that suit the hipster camouflage suit. <laughs> I'm uh, probably most active um, on the Acquia podcast. You can find me on Twitter making a lot of noise, especially when my plane lands uh, at, uh, you know, in exciting ways. Uh, I'm uh, also, uh, there's my email. Please feel free to be in touch. I'll be at DrupalCon Barcelona. If any of you are going to be there, I'd love to have a chat. I'd like to thank my employer because I have a super cool job. And um, thanks, Drupal Camp Cape Town, for inviting me. I wish I could be there in person. Um, maybe we can make that happen the next time around. So Angie Byron, um, I did a podcast with her. You can find that on that stream. 
um, she she made a great statement that I that I that I really like. Uh, and the interview is uh, we were at the United Nations actually when we were doing this, and she said. We make, we as Drupalists, we make really abstract, complicated programming concepts, concepts accessible to non-developers, available to them by clicking a few buttons without having to understand all the code that comes underneath it. What I get excited about is the idea that we create really easily accessible things to help those people who are on the front lines trying to make the world a better place. We can build technology to enable that. So, um, especially with the story about, you know, mobile internet access in the world and in the developing world, uh, Drupal built in a mobile first way, uh, in a restful first way, able to power apps and, 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 and mobile uh, websites by default. Drupal 8's in a perfect position to do this, so this is fantastic. Here are the four statements that, that kind of form our ideals. You're free to use this stuff for any reason and nobody can take it away. And you're free to understand it. And that mitigates risks. And um, you can really get exactly, you know, it does what it says on the box. And you can be sure of that. And you can make, you can change it. You can make it exactly the tool you or your clients need. And we're all incredibly empowered by the fact that every time you fix a bug, it's also fixed for me. Every time I write an improvement to your module, it's also available to everyone else. And by sharing this, we, we become an incredibly powerful or organism and an incredibly powerful force for good. There are more, you know, plus minus 30,000 active developers, 100,000 active users on Drupal.org, and literally millions and millions of people in the world who touch Drupal every day. And that's incredibly, that's incredibly exciting. Um, I highly recommend this book, Democratizing Innovation. It uh, predicted a lot of what's happening in open source today already 10 years ago. Um, and essentially, uh, this, uh, this particular statement, he talks about um, how people building the tools that they use themselves are an uh, incredible force for innovation because we know exactly what we need and we don't have to wait for someone else to build it for us. This is a, a fantastic read if you're interested in this particular concept um, I'm going to put these slides up online um, and uh, skim over a lot, obviously, today because we don't have a lot of time. Here's a, here's a really interesting comparison about working in proprietary versus working in open source. And this is the pragmatic side. This, this is, has nothing really to do with, uh, with the freedom side. This is the, a lot to do with the fact that it has a zero licensing fee, uh, you know, a, a licensing fee of zero money. And uh, when you, once you get to the bottom half of this slide, you'll notice that once you're not paying a licensing fee, you can invest in features. You can tell your clients that for the same price, I can build you a better product, by, a project by definition, right? And you're free to invest in what you need and when you need it and in your own team. And this is also incredibly empowering. I did an interview. Um, let's see. Uh, most of a year ago, um, it's, I, I still find it fairly interesting. Drupal 8 wasn't uh, as close to being ready as it is now, obviously, but um, it went into this dis the discussion uh, of open source licensing and such, which, uh, which is part of the foundation of, of, of what we do every day. So this concept of successful, successful open source software, it leads us to be able to um, and here's a quick ad. If you need me for weddings, bar mitzvahs, or government conferences, um, um, I give other talks that talk about how uh, open source empowers businesses to drive innovation and cost savings and risk mitigation, and how um, Drupal especially is so big in government today because we can enable community collaboration, um, giving stakeholders uh, a say in their government, and, and especially, um, well, I guess, especially the United States and the UK, where I'm uh, very familiar with it, there's incredible things going on with Drupal and government. And it all comes back to the fact that we offer these, these, these open source, you know, superpowers. There are people who tell you that features are the only thing matters that matters, um, but that's simply, that's simply not true. Once you're free to use something, you can be a blind Italian high school student who writes, who builds his own website in Drupal because it's so accessible and then um, writes a blacklist of non-accessible software, but also works with them to improve their software if they're willing to work with him. And I think that, uh, you know, a proprietary software product would have never given him some, you know, some stuff for free to build his website and then make a positive difference in the world. But we did that as Drupal. And, and that's a great, uh, it's, it's a great testament to the power of what we do. Owning 
the bricks of your building, right? Owning your own infrastructure puts you in control of your own destiny. I don't want my government to be beholden to someone else um, for, you know, for the citizen services that I need. Um, and I don't want my landlord, you know, uh, uh, to double my license fee next year for me to keep my own business. I don't want to invest five years into realizing my vision with, with some software that then gets sunsetted because it's not making somebody else enough profit. With open source, you own your own building. With Drupal, you're in charge um, and, and, and you're free. You have the freedom to, to do what you want to do with it. I highly, highly recommend that you check out Aral Balkan's project called Indy, I-N-D dot I-E. It's a very, very ambitious implementation of GPL software to build a free distributed network and devices on top of it. Uh, but the best thing he had to say there was, you know, if I have to say trust me, don't trust me. And I want you to keep in mind that uh, things like the voting machine scandals in the United States right now where the state of Kansas keeps a record of people's votes technically, but then when a mathematician discovers a statistical anomaly in the voting records that indicates they've been tampered with, the state says, oh, well, actually, we never intended for those records that we keep to be released. So, you know, and it's such a hassle and they're hard to, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna release those. Um, if you, you can only build transparent, and uh, uh, fully accountable systems of record with open source software where none of it is a secret. There's no black box. Um, so so it's, it's very important that we do that. Um, there are, you know, this, this brand of coffee maker is very popular in the United States. And uh, last year they famously released the version two, which had, if you can believe it, DRM protected coffee pods. And um, <laughs> now, right, but try and keep a, you know, a geek away from her coffee by locking it down with DRM and see how long that digital lock lasts, right? Uh, but, you know, so that's cute and that's funny, but the problem comes with, with DRM and with lockout. Um, if you don't have transparent systems, you don't know if they're implemented poorly. Uh, it turns out that there's a race condition in some software that was running uh, uh, radio medical devices, radiation devices, and um, some people died because of a problem with the software. Uh, just heard about this recently, I haven't read into it. Um, but if you don't have open source transparent systems, right? How do you know, like if when you have a self-driving car, do you want somebody able to be able to stop you and, and pull you out there? There, you know, if there's a police override code, there are times and places where we don't trust our local authorities, right? Um, there have been successful hacks on uh, even the cars of today where people are able to remotely kill the brake systems and, and steer the cars. Uh, this is really scary. And then I get even more scared um, when, it's, when it talks about, you know, devices that are going to be put into our bodies as we get older. Um, these things are coming. There are already pacemakers in people's bodies that are uh, uh, Bluetooth enabled that are non-secure. They're completely open implementations. So anybody could, could walk by one of these people and kill them. And there are proven attack vectors into those devices. That is frigging crazy. So we need to take over the internet of things with accountable, transparent, open source software. Um, I encourage you to look into the All Seen Alliance and the All Join framework. This is the Linux Foundation effort to create an open standard and an open framework for Internet of Things devices, and it's a it's a really, really, really worthwhile effort. And I hope that um, you know, looking at these sort of devices, you can imagine the kind of havoc that bad actors uh, who are technically capable could uh, could wreak with that that sort of stuff. Thank you so much for inviting me to have a quick chat with you today. I really, really encourage, to remember the, I encourage you to remember the incredibly privileged position that we're in as, as, as technically capable people and that we need to help everyone else out. Drupal is a great place to give that kind of help. Please build safe, secure, compel, compelling, and empowering applications by default. Please also feel free to be in touch with me. And um, thank you so, so, so very much. I, uh, I'm 
I'm really, really glad to be here today. And bring me a badge to Barcelona. Okay, okay Jan. Thanks from Cape Town. See you in Barcelona, and we right. will bring your badge. Excellent. Hey, Cheerio. have a great camp. Will do. Thanks.